What you're looking at is the very first image from a brand new telescope that's about to change astronomy forever. In just 10 hours, it captured over 10 million galaxies. 10 million. Every speck of light you see here is an entire galaxy, each with billions of stars, all inside a single photo. This is the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. It's not floating in space. It's on a mountaintop in Chile, and it has the biggest digital camera ever built, with more than 3 billion pixels. Its job isn't to take a few pretty pictures. It's going to film the universe in motion, scanning the entire southern sky every few nights to catch everything that changes, from exploding stars to passing asteroids. In this video, we'll break down these first ever images, what they actually show, and why astronomers are so excited. And stay to the end. There's a hidden detail in this image that almost no one noticed. The story begins with one person, Vera Rubin. In the 1970s, Rubin studied how galaxies rotate. She found something strange. The stars at the edges of galaxies were moving faster than they should. The visible matter, the stars and gas we could see, wasn't enough to explain the motion. There had to be something else, something invisible, exerting extra gravity. Her work was one of the first solid pieces of evidence for what we now call dark matter. Rubin's persistence changed astronomy. She proved that most of the universe isn't made of what we can see. But she also believed in a broader idea, that science advances fastest when we observe without bias, to look everywhere, at everything, and let the universe tell its story. The observatory named in her honor was built around that same principle. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory stands high in the Chilean Andes on a mountain called Cerro Pachon. The summit sits nearly 9,000 feet above sea level, a place where the air is thin and dry and the sky stays clear most nights of the year. It's near other world-class observatories like Gemini South, but Rubin was designed for something completely different. Most telescopes look deep, Rubin looks wide. It's built to capture enormous swaths of the sky over and over and piece them together into a living map of the cosmos. Construction began in the mid-2010s, led by the National Science Foundation and the U.S. Department of Energy, with international partners contributing to the effort. The goal was ambitious, create a telescope and camera system powerful enough to map the entire visible southern sky every few nights. The core of the observatory is the Simoni Survey Telescope, an 8.4-meter reflector with a unique three-mirror optical design. That design allows for a massive field of view, three and a half degrees across about 40 times the width of the full moon. One image covers nearly 10 square degrees of sky. At the center of it all sits the LSST camera. Built at the SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory in California, it's the largest digital camera ever made for astronomy, 3.2 billion pixels, a focal plane more than half a meter wide, 189 CCD sensors cooled to minus 100 degrees Celsius to minimize noise. The camera can take an exposure, read it out, and move to the next field in just seconds. If you printed one Rubin image at full resolution, it would cover a basketball court. If you tried to display it on 4K screens, you'd need about 400 of them, all running at once. That's how big each photo is. But Rubin isn't just about big images. It's about speed and repetition. Each exposure lasts about 30 seconds. The telescope then slews to a new part of the sky, stabilizes, and shoots again. In a single night, it can take hundreds of pictures. Every three or four nights, it will have imaged the entire southern hemisphere. Over 10 years, that means every patch of sky will be revisited around 800 times. From the beginning, the project faced huge engineering challenges. The mirrors had to be polished to nanometer precision. The dome had to protect against earthquakes and wind gusts. The data system had to move tens of terabytes per night from Chile to processing centers in the United States. And of course, there were delays, funding gaps, weather problems, the pandemic. But the team kept going. By early 2025, after more than a decade of work, the LSST camera arrived on the mountain. Engineers installed it in March. On April 15th, the observatory captured its first photons, light from the sky hitting the new system for the first time. The images were raw, blurry, 
uncalibrated, but they proved everything worked. Over the next two months, technicians aligned the mirrors, tuned the focus, and calibrated the filters. On June 23, 2025, they released the first official images. The first release centered on a colossal image of the Virgo cluster. At first glance, it looks like a simple, densely packed field of light. But zoom in, and it's almost dizzying. Each tiny dot that first appears to be a star reveals itself to be an entire galaxy, consisting of hundreds of billions of suns. Thousands of these galaxies fill the frame, stretching across tens of millions of light years. Some are graceful spirals, still intact, while others are warped, shredded, and smeared by gravity into faint streams and arcs. These bridges of light are the remnants of galaxies torn apart by collisions that happened eons ago. The image isn't static, even though nothing is visibly moving. You can almost feel the slow ballet of cosmic interaction, clusters merging, galaxies devouring each other, light from ancient stars blending into the glow of the cluster's intracluster medium. The level of detail in this image is insane. For astronomers, the Virgo cluster photo is more than art, it's data. It's a map of dark matter, a record of galactic history, and a preview of what Rubin will do for the entire sky once the full survey begins. Hubble could show us small patches of Virgo in exquisite close-up, but Rubin's wide field gives us the forest instead of just the trees. For the first time, we can see the structure and context of a region of the universe as large as this with both resolution and scale. That's the kind of view scientists used to dream about. Then came the second image, the Trifid and Lagoon Nebulae, two enormous clouds of gas and dust in our Milky Way. This wasn't just a single exposure, it was a stack of 678 individual shots, layered together to form one of the most detailed wide-field images ever taken of this region. You can actually see red and pink gas clouds winding through soft blue areas of reflected starlight, showing where new stars are forming. Dark, snake-like dust lanes cut across glowing star fields. These are stellar nurseries, places where new suns are born out of collapsing clouds of gas. Rubin captured them with enough dynamic range to reveal faint outer halos of gas that had never been fully resolved before. You can trace the outlines of turbulence and feedback, see how newborn stars carve cavities into the clouds around them. And all this came from a test image taken before the telescope was even declared fully operational. The Trifid and Lagoon composite also demonstrated the camera's sheer power. At 3.2 billion pixels, you can zoom in endlessly without losing sharpness. It's like having a microscope for the sky. And yet, unlike telescopes that chase small, distant targets, Rubin does this on a massive scale, covering a huge area of the Milky Way in one frame. Detail and scale don't have to be opposites anymore. The third result from those first nights was quieter, but maybe even more significant, Rubin's early asteroid detections. In a series of rapid exposures taken over several hours, software started flagging moving dots, objects drifting subtly across the background of stars. In just a few days of testing, Rubin found thousands of asteroids, including some that had never been catalogued before. A few of them were near-Earth objects, small but real, and entirely new discoveries. That's an important milestone because it proves Rubin's automated alert system works. Once fully active, it will identify these moving objects in near real time, giving astronomers and planetary defense teams a daily stream of updates about what's moving through our neighborhood of space. There's a powerful contrast in these three images. The Virgo cluster shows ancient light, billions of years old, from galaxies frozen in time. The Trifid and Lagoon Nebulae show star birth happening right now inside our own galaxy. And the asteroid detections capture motion on human timescales, objects shifting over hours instead of eons. In a way, these first results encapsulate the entire mission of Rubin, connecting the static and the dynamic, the distant and the near, the past and the present. Remember that ocean of galaxies from the opening scene? That was just one of these images. And the astonishing thing is that Rubin can take shots like that over and over, scanning the entire southern sky every few nights. What makes this possible is Rubin's wide field of view. Hubble, with its razor-sharp optics, 
could only observe tiny portions of the Virgo cluster at a time, like peeking through a keyhole. It gave us exquisite close-ups, but no sense of the whole structure. Rubin does the opposite. Its camera captures an area of sky so vast that it can see the cluster as a complete system. You can trace how galaxies interact over millions of light years, watching cosmic evolution unfold on scales that Hubble simply couldn't access. That's why astronomers are so excited. This is the first time we've had a tool that can show both scale and detail in the same frame, revealing how the universe builds and breaks down its largest structures. Then there's the Trifid and Lagoon Nebulae image, which looks more like a painting than data. The deep reds come from hydrogen gas, excited by the ultraviolet light of newborn stars. This is an emission nebula, glowing from the energy it absorbs. The cooler blues come from reflection, where dust grains scatter the light of nearby stars, and the dark streaks slicing through those clouds are cold molecular dust, blocking the light behind them. Rubin's image shows how all these components blend together, creating a complex tapestry of star formation and destruction. What's striking here is how well it balances clarity and scope, where Hubble, or JWST, zoom in to show single pillars or protostars in incredible close-up, Rubin steps back and shows the entire neighborhood, the vast architecture of how these nurseries connect. It reveals patterns of turbulence, shells of expanding gas, and faint halos stretching well beyond what smaller fields of view could ever capture. The final piece of this story is the asteroid detections. On the surface, they seem less glamorous than galaxies and nebulae, but they demonstrate Rubin's true power, speed, and precision. The telescope's observing cadence allows it to take a sequence of images of the same patch of sky just minutes apart. When these frames are compared, the stars stay fixed, but the asteroids shift slightly. In those small motions lies an enormous amount of information, position, velocity, and trajectory. In just one night, Rubin can track more than 2,000 moving objects. During testing, a software engineer reportedly noticed a faint dot that didn't behave like a star. It moved between exposures, slow but steady. It turned out to be a new asteroid, a small rock a few hundred meters wide that had never been catalogued before. That moment was symbolic of what Rubin is built to do, find what moves in a sky that's mostly still. Each of these images, Virgo, Trifid, and Lagoon, the asteroid fields, represents a different aspect of the universe's behavior. One shows how galaxies evolve, one shows how stars are born, and one shows how the smaller pieces of our own solar system drift and change. And for the first time, we can read those stories all at once. The sheer amount of data the Vera Rubin Observatory produces is almost impossible to comprehend. Every night it observes the sky, it will capture tens of terabytes of information, enough to fill entire data centers over time. In just a decade, its total archive will exceed half a petabyte, making it one of the largest data sets in human history. This is a machine built to convert the sky into a real-time stream of data, turning photons that left distant stars millions or billions of years ago into numbers and alerts that can reach scientists in under a minute. The process begins the moment light hits Rubin's 3.2 gigapixel camera. Those photons are turned into digital signals, processed by a chain of high-performance computers sitting in the observatory and data centers thousands of kilometers away. Within seconds, those signals become calibrated images, then analyzed pixel by pixel by algorithms trained to spot anything new, a brightening star, a fading galaxy, or a dot that's shifted position. When something changes, Rubin automatically generates an alert and pushes it out to the world. Astronomers across continents will receive notifications in less than 60 seconds after the light was captured. The first images proved that Rubin's technology works, but they also hinted at the scale of discovery that's coming. Everything the observatory does ties into five grand scientific goals. The first and perhaps most ambitious goal is to tackle dark energy and dark matter. When Rubin surveys the entire southern sky every few nights, it will track how galaxies are distributed and how their shapes are slightly distorted by gravity from unseen matter. This effect, 
called weak gravitational lensing, lets astronomers map where dark matter is hiding and how it's evolving over time. Across billions of galaxies, Rubin's data will measure the growth of cosmic structure and reveal how dark energy, the mysterious force accelerating the universe's expansion, has changed over billions of years. The Virgo cluster image is already a preview of this power. Faint arcs and tidal distortions that Rubin easily detects are the very signatures these cosmologists will study on a global scale. The second goal is the solar system census. In those early test nights alone, Rubin spotted thousands of asteroids, some never cataloged before. Over its first decade, it's expected to detect millions of them, including tens of thousands of near-Earth objects that could one day cross our planet's orbit. It will do this automatically, frame by frame, using its fast cadence to pick out subtle movements no human could ever track manually. It's planetary defense powered by data science, and it's going to redefine how we keep watch over our cosmic neighborhood. The third focus is the transient universe, the events that flare, fade, or explode without warning. Rubin's rapid alert system will flag supernovae within hours of their first light, catch kilonovae from neutron star mergers, and possibly even detect optical counterparts to fast radio bursts. These are phenomena that vanish quickly, and before Rubin, many were missed entirely. Now they'll be caught as they happen, giving astronomers a real-time view. The fourth pillar is charting the Milky Way in unprecedented detail. Over the next decade, Rubin will record billions of stars across our galaxy, mapping their positions, motions, and brightness changes. It will uncover faint stellar streams, the remnants of smaller galaxies our own Milky Way once absorbed. It's like reconstructing the family tree of our galaxy using the light of its oldest stars. And finally, the fifth pillar, the changing sky. Rubin isn't just taking a census, it's observing evolution. By revisiting the same regions hundreds of times, it will create a living archive of how the universe behaves over time. We'll see variable stars pulse, quasars flicker, galaxies shift, and supernovae bloom. Time domain astronomy has existed before, but not at this scale. Rubin transforms it from a niche field into the backbone of modern astrophysics. The next steps are already in motion. In May 2026, Rubin will release Data Preview 2, the first full set of reprocessed commissioning data for scientists to test and explore. By January 2027, Data Release 1 will open, offering the first six months of true survey observations to the global community. From there, the pace accelerates. Rubin will scan the southern sky about 800 times over the next decade, building a complete time-lapse map of the universe. Partnerships with universities, research centers, and even citizen scientists will make much of this data publicly available. Students, amateurs, and professionals alike will be able to mine the same vast database for discoveries. The first images from the Vera C. Rubin Observatory mark the start of a new era in astronomy. For the first time, we're not just photographing the universe, we're watching it change in real time. Each night, Rubin will capture billions of stars, galaxies, and asteroids, turning the sky into a living record of motion and evolution. It's the realization of Vera Rubin's vision to measure what others couldn't see and uncover the invisible forces shaping everything.